everybody. Please sit down. Get things done. Nobody gets it done like we do. Now, I don't know, uh, are we letting the media in? Is the media here? I guess we have a limited media because of distancing. And some people think I did that on purpose. But we've been getting along with them reasonably well lately. I just want to thank you all for coming back, because you came back. Uh, this is a Republican group, largely, if not in all cases. You know, they look pretty Republican. I'm not sure about Devin. Let's just uh, you're a Republican, aren't you? I just want to say a few words, and uh, maybe we'll say a couple of words in front of the media. We go, we're going into transition, and I call it transition to greatness. It's going to be transition to greatness because we're going to do something very fast, and we're going to have a phenomenal year next year. Third quarter transition. Fourth quarter is going to be good. This tremendous pent-up demand, and next year we're going to have a phenomenal year. And with that, I think maybe I'd like to go around the room, and you could introduce yourself and uh, say a few words. And then after that, the media will leave, and we'll have some discussions among ourselves, okay? On an absolute basis, the job that, that, that you've led on that has been absolutely tremendous, and that's giving the tools to America to start opening up these counties and allowing Americans to get back to work. Thank you, Jared. You've done a great job. Someday, people are going to appreciate it. They say, <laughs> oh, he's a relation. Well, he's a relation. If he wasn't a good relation, I'd get him out of here so fast. <laughs> Sometimes we have a problem, Louis. I say, get Jared on it. Uh, great job, Jared. Thank you. Smart guy. So here's another smart guy. So Devin, uh, I think I thought about Devin more over the last couple of days than anybody else, because this guy would come in and he'd tell people what was going on, and nobody believed it, because it, it was not believable. It, it wasn't true that they would be doing a takeover of a presidency illegally, and all of the illegality that was going on. And he was the first one, our superstar Jim, and all of us will admit this guy was just, he wouldn't stop. Devin Nunes, he wouldn't stop. He saw it before anybody, and you deserve a medal. You deserve the equivalent of Pulitzer Prizes. They ought to take the Pulitzer Prize away from all of these phony journalists that got a Pulitzer Prize, and they, they were wrong. They were wrong on everything, and now they've been proven wrong. I saw where Clapper, not a smart guy. How do you have not a smart person heading up intelligence? How does that work, right? You have a man uh, who is not smart, and he heads up intelligence. And that's possibly what happened. They ran away with it. But, but he knew what was going on, and I'd watch him on television. He'd say the worst things. And now I know why shifty shift, dishonest, corrupt politician, why this guy didn't want these papers exposed. Because all these people said, under oath, where they go to jail if they lie, they were totally, no, I didn't see any collusion with Russia. I saw nothing. No, I saw. I said, but he was on television before and after saying there was massive collusion, like Putin was my best friend. We had no calls to Russia. We had no calls from Russia for years. And all of a sudden, we have this great friendship. And by the way, getting along with Russia is a great thing. Getting along with Putin and Russia is a great thing. And stuff like this makes it impossible. And that leads to very bad things, very bad things. But I have to say that uh, Devin was incredible. He understood it. He understood that it was a hoax before anybody else knew what was happening. And then I have to say, the people in this room took over and did a hell of a job with you, right? They had guts. They had guts like nobody's ever seen before. Uh, I want to thank you on behalf of our country. And I'd like to have you say a few words. Well, well thank you, Mr. President. And, uh it's unfortunate what you had to live through for the last four years, yeah. uh, your, from your campaign to your presidency, and I appreciate your kind words, and for all the folks in here who have worked so hard uh, getting to the bottom of the Russia hoax situation. Uh, let me just talk a little bit about the uh, situation our country's in now. I know you're well aware we've had six, seven weeks here of keeping people inside their homes. We've learned a lot about this virus. Uh, there's still a lot more we need to learn. Uh, we need to learn what our uh, friends over in Asia were doing, the time that this virus uh, was taking off and the issues with the World Health Organization. Uh, and I believe with your new pick, with John Ratcliffe, uh, member of, of the House Intelligence Committee, 
member from Texas, he's going to do a great job uh, getting to the bottom of this and I think uh, leading the intelligence agencies uh, through some what have been some pretty dark times over the last few years. Um, and and I think we should say Rick Grinnell has done a great job, too. In fact, John called up. John Ratcliffe called up two days ago. He said, you know, I'm really looking forward to this, but I don't know if I can top the guy we have in there right now. And he was, uh, he, he's going to do a phenomenal job. But Rick Grinnell has, yeah, he's done has been incredible. I mean, Before finally... that, we had an empty seat. We had an empty seat. But Rick Grinnell, what he's done, even Louie would admit that. And I saw Rick yesterday walking in with thousands of pages of paper into the Justice Department. We didn't see that before, did we, Louie? Huh? Rick Grinnell did a great job, and John is going to be phenomenal. Please. Well, Mr. President, what we expect and the American people expect is transparency from our law enforcement agencies. And uh, I think we're well on our way to, to getting that. China lied and, and people died. And as an infantry officer, an ER physician, former business CEO, I know that when a leader is caught in an ambush, that leader has to make split-second decisions with the information that they have. Uh, Mr. President, I'm proud of the decisions that you have made. Uh, decisions like banning travel from China, which these guys all laughed at and criticized, but it saved American lives. So you saved American lives with those decisions. And we in Tennessee, we thank you for that. A number of our leading doctors said that would have, that saved hundreds of thousands of lives. And that was in January. And I remember being in a room with, I think, 21 people, and I was the only one that wanted to do that. Nobody else wanted to do it. They thought it was, they thought it was crazy. It had never been done before. Nothing like that had ever been done before. And now you watch them, the Democrats and the media, say, oh, I should have done it sooner. There was nobody even thought about it. And a month later, you'd see Nancy Pelosi and other people talking about this disease is just nothing. It's going to spread over. And she wanted to go, and she was actually in late in February. She was in Chinatown in San Francisco celebrating because this disease is going to be nothing. So I don't — I understand that. I mean, she felt that, and I can understand it. But for them to say much earlier, I actually banned Chinese from coming in, China from coming into our country. It's a uh, — it's a, just such a political disgrace that they're able to get away. It's just like uh, Shifty Schiff making the statement today to try and save face when we have him cold on the papers, on the documents, and in about 19 different ways. It's, uh, it's so bad and so sad for our country. Louis? Uh, thank you, Mr. President. And uh, uh, echoing the thanks, uh, if you had lost that election, uh, in 2016, we would never have been energy independent. And uh, it's been great for Texas. It's been great for America. Uh, and I do want to uh, advise our media friends before they write stories about how we didn't wear masks and uh, we didn't possibly socially distance adequately, that you saw to it that we had tests and that nobody in here has the coronavirus unless it's somebody in the media. So the only reason we would wear masks is if we were trying to protect ourselves from you in the media, and we're not scared of you. So uh, that's why we can be here like this. So thank you for amazing job you've done. And it is amazing to see the hypocrisy. Uh, you, know, you do a travel ban, like Mark said, it saved lives and they called you racist. And then when they realized you did the right thing, they said you should have done it earlier. And, and uh, perhaps they could have noticed the need if they had not been pursuing you know, the, the hoax that was the impeachment. And I know the speaker has appointed this new committee uh, to investigate your handling of the coronavirus. And I've suggested they ought to name that committee the Committee of Oligarchs to Unelect the President, or coup for short. But I'm optimistic, and I wouldn't be if you weren't President. So thank you for the well, work you're you, doing. Thank you, Louie, and you've been a great help. And if we didn't win the election, we wouldn't have found out all of the corrupt practices that Never have taken place at the top of the FBI with uh, dirty cops and all of the things that we found out about other people and other agencies that are equally as important. 
uh, all of this. We, we went on drain the swamp, and that's what we're doing. But nobody ever told me the swamp was going to be this, this vicious bad. or this deep. And, and we're doing it. And could I make know. a suggestion on the justice area? Um, and I know that with the Democrats in charge, some of the most important reforms may not happen. But the FBI is the only law enforcement entity I'm aware of that has not even come into the 20th century, not even asking them to come into the 21st. Everybody else does videotapes and audio tapes, and the FBI interviews witnesses and goes back and records their own notes of what they want to say a witness said, and then it's easily changed. And we need to bring them into the 20, 20th century where they start at least doing some audio recordings so they can't change them. So th that's one of the lessons we have seen from what's happened in their effort to create a coup. And not only do they not record, but they write their notes. And then when the notes are bad for them, they go and change them <laughs> months later. This is a corrupt deal that's been going on. Yep. And we caught them cold. And now we have to see what happens. But Bill Barr has done a great job. He's a strong guy, and he's done a great job, and not easy. He's fighting a lot of fights, yes. but he really has been great, and we appreciate it. Uh, but you're right about that. I, I said, well, I'd like to hear a tape of what the interview was, and they said, well, no, it was just — and they write it out like scribble. Yeah. It's crazy. And then they change it. Yeah. And they change signatures. They change everything. Say so we don't have the old one. It's uh, one of the most incredible things. I, I just want to thank everybody in this room for the past three and a half years for supporting our president and the administration and everything you've done. Um, this man goes 18, 20 hours a day. As many of you know, he's the most transparent president in history. He's the most accessible, too. There's nobody in this room that can't call or get through to him mornings, evenings, midday. Um, but we love you all, and thank you so much on behalf of everybody here in the White House for everything that you've done supporting our president. It means the world. Thank you. And what a job he's done, too. Right, Mark? He's yes. uh, yeah. been amazing, and he does it himself. Uh, I remember when I was running Crooked Hillary, had 28 people. I had Dan, and uh, Dan blew them away. It wasn't even a contest. And we have now, I guess, six different sites, platforms, and we have uh, numbers that these people don't have. They don't even come close to it. So uh, when they write false stories, we can go around them. And it's very important to be who needs who needs it. I wish we didn't need it. But unfortunately, we have to do that. We have to have that uh, because we don't get an honest press. Uh, please, I'll tell you, Gates, you, you've been something. He's he's out there, Devin, right? He's out there fighting. Thank you, go Mr. ahead, President. Matt. Your, your team is here. We're ready to work and we are inspired by our president. Uh, I have observed your willingness to work with anyone. I saw the Democrat governor of New Jersey categorize the administration's response as extremely responsive. I've noted on our calls that our Democrat colleagues in the House, like Tom Suozzi and Jimmy Panetta, have made contributions reflected in the great work that Jared has done on testing and that Secretary Mnuchin has done and that the chief has done as well. But I have to say, Mr. President, I'm deeply concerned about what we're seeing from the Democratic leadership. Because in the last several days, they have been caught in a terrible lie. Not only was there no collusion, we not now know that the leaders of the Democratic Party knew that there was no collusion at the beginning and willingly lied to the American people anyway. Now we see that they're reverting to their old playbook as we want to work together to provide provision to our people and take good ideas no matter where they come from. Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer just want to set up new committees to investigate rather than working together. I know that even before being president, you talked about the importance of the president being a great cheerleader for our country and for our economy. I know, and I know in the jobs report today, we can see that even the people who have been uh, furloughed or who are on unemployment now, they're optimistic that this is the team that will bring America back. What advice would you give us to try to have our Democrat leadership behave more like the governors you've worked with and some of the rank and file colleagues who've made helpful suggestions rather than just reverting to their hatred and their lies to cover their tracks for their last set of lies? I think they've been doing it so long and gotten away with it for so long, long prior to us. And they had that eight years, the Obama eight years that have been 
absolutely terrible if you look at the Justice Department and what's taken place. You look at the FBI and what's taken place. Uh, and frankly, prior to that, a lot of bad things went on. All we can do is keep winning, and if we keep winning, eventually they're going to come around one way or the other. May not be in that form, may not be them, because I'm not sure that you can do that with them. Uh, tremendous dishonesty from Schiff and from others. Uh, and they know it's going on. They know these are not stupid people. They know it was a hoax. They know better than anybody in this room it was a hoax. They set it up. They're not aggrieved. I watched Schiff. Shifty Schiff, nine inches around the neck. And I watched this guy uses the world's smallest collar, right? But I watched him, to, I guess this morning, talking about he acts so aggrieved, so aggrieved. He knows it was a, he got caught. And not only caught, if he weren't in the halls of Congress, he'd be in jail because he made up phony stories and phony speeches and phony every, — everything was phony. He's a sick man. He's really a sick man. He's a corrupt politician. So I wouldn't count on somebody like him. But I think overall, we have some really good support. I've had great support from Democrat governors. Uh, I would say almost all. Almost all. And in some cases, oh, look, Andrew Cuomo the other day said that I, we have done a phenomenal job. That's a nice statement. Phenomenal. That's a good word. It's true. But we've had great support. And uh, Gavin Newsom, the same thing. He said something the equivalent of that. Uh, so we can work with them. But I, I think this group is uh, perhaps beyond repair. They're sick. There's something wrong with them. Mark, please. Well, Mr. President, I, I know I speak for you, but I, I just want to thank all of you for setting the example and coming back to Washington, D.C. It's time that we send a message to the American people that we're open for business, we're ready to get back, and we're ready to support a president who has been willing to take the bold moves each and every day to make sure that America is first. So thank you for allowing me to serve, and thank all of you. Well, I have to — before I introduce Jim, I have to say, so we had all of the great NCAA teams here uh, just prior to COVID. <laughs> Otherwise, they wouldn't have been able to come. But we had all of the teams. And one of the teams was the top wrestling wrestlers in the country, all the champions, NCAA wrestlers. And I saw him, and I immediately knew it was a wrestling. I could see it was a little action going on with those ears, and <laughs> the muscles were coming out of the shirts, and I could see by the jawline. And I walked up with Jim Jordan. And they didn't give a damn about the president. They said, that's Jim Jordan. You don't know what a great wrestler, NCAA champion and a great wrestler. And uh, they saw him, those wrestlers saw this guy, and they said, sorry, president, I got to say hello to him first, right? So Jim Jordan, and he is, he's a champ, he's a winner, he knows how to win. Thank you, Mr. President. The exact same time that we learned what we did about General Flynn, the exact same time we learned that there was absolutely no basis for the entire Mueller Russia investigation that the FBI did, that very time, Nancy Pelosi sets up a select committee to come after you again. And so we just need to understand, guys, that they're never going to stop. But uh, in spite of that relentless attack we've seen from them, Mr. President, we appreciate your leadership. We appreciate your, your entire team's um, leadership, getting things done for the American people. And I think, as, as Dan said, I appreciate your work ethic. I know how hard you work for the American people. I mean, I know, I know how hard Meadows were. He used to return my calls all the time. Now, I, <laughs> I know he's working 15 hours, 18 hours a, a day, and you're working, you're working even more. So thank you for doing all the people in the 4th District of Ohio appreciate it. The people around the country appreciate it. And we just need to keep it up, and we'll have the Great American Comeback happening real soon. Great. But I, and you're right, Jim. I looked at uh, this com I didn't even know anything about it. I see she's setting up an oversight committee. Jim. And I'm getting, I'm getting called by other countries saying what a great job we're doing. Could we have some help, sir, with testing? Your tests are better than our tests. They're the best tests in the world. We have the best tests in the world with the most tests in the world. Could we get ventilators? Is there any way our people are dying? Could we get ventilators? Everything. And they set up an oversight committee about the job we're doing. When she, a month later, was in Chinatown dancing, as I said, it's a disgrace. But what's even more of a disgrace is take a look at the people on the committee. They're the greatest Trump haters in history. Maxine Waters, every one of them is, is people that were screaming impeach before I even announced running. Now, I kid when I say that, because they'll say that's not true, but pretty close, pretty close. You know, if I say that, they'll say, that's not true. They don't understand sarcasm in the press. 
But I will say, uh, you look at some of the people in that committee, everyone is a total kill, and it's a disgrace. It's a disgrace that they could do a thing like that. And here we go again. Mm -hmm. Here we go again. Uh, but we beat them, and we've been beating them for a long time, and they, they cannot accept it. They cannot accept it. That's why it's interesting. I can work with the governors, and we're doing it really well. And they're saying great things about me and the job we're all doing. Uh, but you can't work with these people. I think they're stone cold crazy. It's been nothing but a merciless last four years that uh, Schumer, Pelosi, and her cabal have essentially tried to undo the 2016 election. I've only been in politics a relatively short period of time, but it's obvious to me that there are people in this country who hate you and hate this administration more than they love this country, and they will see it torn down. Uh, this crisis has highlighted this. We thought that this possibly could be a way of bringing our nation together. But unfortunately, partisan politics has ruined the day. Uh, this has been building a plane while we've been flying it. I think that's a very good analogy, but the plane is built and it's time to land. It's time that we made decisions based upon fact, not fiction, not fear mongering, not cartoons by the media, but truth. And wouldn't it be nice to get the truth? Oops. I want you to know that I believe you are exactly the right person for the job. Um, despite all of the Democrats, the top Obama people, maybe President Obama himself, since we found out yesterday, trying to take you out, you, despite all of that, you led our nation into the greatest economy in the world. And I am totally convinced that you will do it again. And so please don't let all the critics get you down. I know a lot of people are just Trump haters and they say mean things, but there are so many people out there, so many people in Arizona throughout the nation that absolutely think you're doing a great job. So please keep it up. Thank you. We Debbie. appreciate you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Debbie. Beautiful. And next year, 2021, can be absolutely a spectacular year. So I really believe that. And I was just say it is my honor to be part of this, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, Larry. Thank you, Mr. President. I want to thank everybody around the table. I've had the opportunity to speak to almost all of you and, and all of your ideas. Uh, as others have said, it's the President's economic policies that led us to great success. I have the utmost confidence we have the greatest scientists, the greatest medical people, there will be a vaccine. We will kill this virus. And the policies that you've put in place recently are protecting American workers and American business as we go through this difficult time. So thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Steve. I appreciate it very much. And uh, you've done a great job. Uh, so we're looking at the transition to greatness, and I think it's starting right now. But so it's the transition to greatness. That's where we are. That's where it's starting right now. And I appreciate everybody for being here, and uh, we're going to have a little meeting after the media goes. Do you have any questions? Is there, yeah. Mr. President, is there, is there a reason why people just aren't wearing masks at the White House? Well, they are. Uh, people they're, they're that not, no, people that are serving me are. Well, we have the not people. seen anyone wear a mask around you, sir, in the last yeah. few weeks. So, well, so I can speak to that. For your safety and well-being, uh, the President has made available to make sure that you can have testing just for the peace of mind. So before you leave today, uh, we've, we've made those arrangements to make sure that you can be tested as well. But we have a lot of people wearing. I'm just looking around. Look at Chafe, White House photographer. I'm sure most of you don't know her, but to the best of my knowledge, she's wearing a mask. Is that a, a mask? Yes. <laughs> I think to the best of my knowledge, it looks like a mask. Mr. President, you were with seven American heroes earlier today, these uh, World War II. Veterans, I was. All in their, in their 90s. Did you consider wearing a mask when you were with them, given their No, because I was very far away. I appreciate the question. Uh, I was very far away from them, as you know. Uh, I would have loved to have gone up and hugged them, because they're great. I had a conversation with everyone, but we were very far away. You saw. Uh, plus, the wind was blowing so hard in such a direction that if if the plague ever reached them, I'd be very surprised. It could have reached me, too. You didn't worry about me. You only worried about them, and that's okay. Because I think they're so pure, it will never happen, all right? They've lived a, a great life. But, uh, no, the wind was uh, howling. And I didn't see anybody with masks. I don't know. Maybe there were. Uh, but uh, they were uh, 
They were great. I had conversations with them, but I was standing. As you noticed, would you say I was quite far away? No, thank you, John. Mr. President. Appreciate uh, that. <laughs> Your book was very good, by the way. Thank you. It was better than I thought it would be. <laughs> no, it was actually a very good book, but it was actually uh, better about me than I thought it would be. So I appreciate it. You knew me for — you've known me for a long time. 26 years. This wasn't really in the schedule, right? I knew him long before I thought in terms of this, but uh, we had one very good story, right? When we were interviewed at the hotel and he took a lot of guff, they said, he's not running. Why you did this was before I announced. And I've been toying with it for a long time, but never did it, never decided. And he took a lot of guff, but he also got great ratings when he did that interview. So I don't know, but it was, it turned out to be a very, Interesting interview, it sort of the first. So, sir, yeah, your book, book is very good. Congratulations. How's it doing? Uh, bestseller list. Bestseller. Bestseller. Yeah. That's good. Like, like Congress Congressman Crenshaw. That's good. Dan has a big. Oh, Dan. <laughs> Dan is doing good, right? Well, is that because I endorsed this book? <laughs> That's a great book. That's. A, I'll tell you, he did something else great. He did a, uh, Kevin a thing on Nancy there, right? Pelosi that was so. Incisive. You, did you see that? He did something that was so incredible, and I actually, I actually pinned it on top. Right, Dan? Yes, sir. We pinned it on top. You were fantastic. You, have you done this before? Yeah, I make mean, videos all the time. You should share, share more. Well, <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I'll tell you. Great job, Dan. You're a great guy. He's a great guy. So, any, is that it? Are you guys all finished? Well, one more, Mr. President. Yeah, go ahead. What kind of a mask is that? It's a, it's a mask. It's a blue mask. It's like a catcher's <laughs> helmet. What? That looks like a catcher's helmet. Go ahead. I used to play so it makes sense. Uh, Federal Watchdog uh, found that uh, Rick Bright's removal from HHS was improper. They're blocking that move right now. Do you, have you seen that report, and do you have any response to it? I don't know. He, to me, he looks like a disgruntled employee. I don't know who he is, uh, but to me, he's a disgruntled employee. And uh, if people are that unhappy, they shouldn't work. If you're unhappy with a company, you shouldn't work there. Go out, get something else. But to me, he's a disgruntled guy, and I hadn't heard great things about him either. Mr. President, about uh, Lieutenant General Michael Flynn, he pleaded guilty twice and admitted before God that he had lied. How does that comport with your present position? Well, I'll just go, and these guys can give you a better answer than I could, most of them in this room. But I'll tell you what, uh, number one, uh, they played the sun game. We're going to go after your son, and uh, number one. And number two, the FBI guys, as I know it, and I found out, uh, Devin, uh, they didn't think he lied at all. They said he didn't lie. He didn't say, they didn't know what they were talking about. And Mueller's group, Mueller's gang, that didn't find that I did much, did they, after wasting three years. But Mueller's gang of culprits, they said he lied. But the FBI, in this case, said he didn't lie. What's the story in that, Devin? Well, you have to remember that this is a 30-some-year uh, veteran of our military who headed the Defense Intelligence Agency. Uh, it would be preposterous to think that he was a Russian agent, and everybody in the press knew this. They had early versions of the dossier. They knew the Democrats were pushing the dossier. And the fact that someone would even ask this question about General Flynn, who was clearly, he was exonerated on January 4th before you were even sworn in to office. We know that from the FBI agents uh, who uh, were reviewing the case. I'm not even sure it was properly predicated to review General Flynn in the first place. You know, there's a lot of people in this town, uh, in the swamp, that all of these people in the media know that work on behalf of foreign agents and aren't registered. And General Flynn, who's a 30-year war veteran, uh, the way that he's been treated, uh, the way his family's been treated, uh, the way that uh, he's lost his, his livelihood, he lost his house, um, and I think the American people uh, uh, owe him a debt of gratitude, and this government owes him and his family an apology. When they didn't have anything on Flynn, they were not going to the FBI found he didn't lie. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.